All right, uh, my name is Bogdan Gadadov, and I'm a PhD candidate in uh, analytics and data science. And my faculty advisor is Mohammed Chowdhury, along with the rest of my committee, Zhao Huang, uh, Louis Van Brackle, and Joe DeBio. And uh, today I'll be talking about uh, one and two step estimation uh, in a time varying parametric model. That's the focus of my dissertation, but as part of it, uh, in the field of non-parametric statistics, I'm specifically today talking about non-parametric techniques for um, volatility estimation. Yes. All right, so in economics, and when you're looking at economic data, it's often of interest to model the variability or the volatility of your assets returns. So if you imagine, look at the stock market, you might see today it might be a relatively stable uh, trend in the price, you might not have much movement. Other days you might have a 300 point swing in the price of uh, an asset. So in economics, we actually wanna model this variability. And uh, in this research, we seek to combine several non-parametric techniques to compare them to uh, current uh, uh, techniques for modeling uh, uh, volatility. So traditionally, we can use a parametric approach, which is an autoregressive conditional heteroscedastic model. In this model, we use, we're estimating the conditional variance of return data by estimating it as a function of the previous lagged errors or terms of your asset return. So for instance, if you're trying to predict today's return, you would use some combination of the previous day's returns, yesterday, the day before, or the day before. In non-parametric techniques, it allows us for local estimation of our unknown regression functions. So in a parametric model, we have to predefine the framework we're using to do our estimation. In non-parametric techniques, usually we can estimate our regression function in local periods. So for instance, take figure one, for example, on the x-axis we have months. So if I'm trying to estimate the value of our function at month 20, I would probably want to choose data which lies around month 20, maybe between months 18 and 22 or 15 and 25. So the width of my interval in which I perform my estimation is dictated by the bandwidth, which is selected usually through, for instance, uh, cross-validation technique. And then also there's a kernel function. The kernel function dictates the weighting of the day. So you generally weight days closer or points closer to your point of estimation higher than points further away. So our proposed research is to combine two non-parametric techniques, a local least squares approach, which we locally fit a polynomial function, and also a local composite quantile regression in which we locally fit quantile regression. So we're modeling the median instead of the mean and doing the local quantile regression approach. Uh, generally, quantile regression is a little bit more robust to outliers than performing a least squares approach. And in this technique, we're doing a two-step approach in which in the first step, we model the returns of the data, and then from that, we take the residuals of those and then use that as an estimation for our variability. And our results are shown in figure two. We find that the local composite quantile regression produces more than 10% less mean squared error and prediction error as shown in figure two. And we're currently now applying this to other firms' data. We have a total of 990 different firms we're looking at. 